But we are going to get started today and uh, with a presentation that Allison's going to take us through most of it, then I'll jump in on a, on a few other things, but really a review of, of the 2015 annual report. And that's the data that you all provide back to the network that then we can, you know, Allison and, and her team and Lynn really crunch through these numbers to see what we do as a network. And I think, again, that's what you're seeing, and I think I've heard so many comments from, from people, particularly those of you who are, who are here for the first time, of how important it is to make a connection with your organization to the national organization and recognize that you are part of something much bigger than your own community. And I think I've heard that from so many people here about how it is, you know, how rewarding it is to come and talk to people who get what you're doing. You know, when you're in your own community, sometimes it's hard to, to, to get, that, get that across, but here everybody understands. And so that's, you know, again, one of the important things about capturing the data, and Allison's going to talk about this, and what we do that you can take back to your community and ex really explain how it fits in to, the, to what's going on nationally. So I'm going to turn it over to Allison, and she's going to take you through, and we're going to spend the next hour talking numbers and facts and figures and why it's all so important. All right. Thank you, Troy. Um, I'm going to try to balance a microphone and a pointer at the same time, um, so we'll see how I do. <laughs> All right. We're going to go through some basics of the annual review. We're going to talk about diaper bank operations, basically what you guys are doing as a whole, um, a media development, um, what you guys are doing with media-wise and, and, and making fundraising, uh, and the network ops and growth to date. Where we, one of the great things about this is the third year doing the annual survey, so we actually have enough data that we can compare to see how diaper banks are doing diaper bank by diaper bank, and it's, it's pretty phenomenal. Um, and then we'll start talking about highlights of, of um, 16, uh, 2016. Troy will talk about uh, media and diaper need awareness week. I'll talk a little bit about origin policy and what we're looking to do for next year. Diaper bank operations. So this year we uh, distributed the survey only to members. So in the past we've distributed the survey to anybody we had in our database. And we said, we, we really just want to find out what members are. And we were defining membership by people who Provide the uh, the annual uh, provide the um, application. their 501c3 or proof of uh, fiscal sponsorship, and respond to our emails. Um, so we had 255 members complete the response out of uh, 276 members. That's a 92 percent response rate, which is better than we've had in the past. We've had 81 percent last year of members. Uh, two organizations requested we move from membership, and we 18 organizations. Um, who we haven't heard from for a few years, we've taken off membership list. If you're here. And you hadn't responded to the uh, annual report the last couple of years, talk to us. We'd like to get you back into the fold, but we, we may have, we may have taken you off because of that. <coughs> all right, just let these numbers sink in for a minute. As a whole, last year, you all distributed 46 million diapers. 46 million diapers. In total, each month, 360, uh, 361, um, 100,000 kids, uh, 361,000 kids, uh, kids were, um, were served. It's, it's amazing. Um, this year, as, as mentioned, we have a chance for direct, direct uh, comparison. 198 programs have uh, completed two surveys. 113 programs have uh, responded to three surveys. And this year we had more questions on business structure and, and basically how you guys are organized. Because we want to see how the organizations are growing as corporations, uh, non-profit corporations, uh, and that we can sort of structure our plans for helping you guys grow more. I've seen it before, but this is the number, this is the network. 65 new diaper banks this year completed the survey. Uh, 116 uh, independent nonprofits, 20 fiscally sponsored, and 18 churches. Again, six, 46 million diapers. That's an average of about 181,000 uh, per diaper bank program. The median is 37 million, uh, 37,000. And what that means is there are a lot. There are some really, really big diaper banks that are sort of skewing the, the average up. But at least half. I mean, but half of the diaper banks are distributing less than 37,000, and half are distributing more than 37,000. 44 diaper banks, mostly the newer ones, um, distributed fewer than 5,000, and a lot, of, and that's folks who just submit, submit their application, hadn't really gotten the, the um, actual distribution yet. Um, but we have 38, 000, uh, 38 diaper banks distributing more than half a million, and 11 distributing more than a million. And we had 
19,000 uh, 19, um, cloth diaper kits uh, distributed this last year. Uh, this is sort of a distribution um, I put in because we need some uh, brick cover it color. We'll fill part of it. It's too hard to read. We're going to post all these uh, presentations so you can look at them in more detail. Um, one third of you provide diapers directly, uh, a diaper pantry um, to individuals. That's what we mean by direct service. The other 67% um, percent, um, with two thirds uh, go to our partner agencies. They may also provide direct service as well, but at least uh, two thirds are using um, partner agencies. That's a total of 4,157 partner agencies um, across the network. Uh, the average is about 24, um, and 84% uh, of the um, diaper banks distributing about 100,000 or more are using agencies for distribution. It really is the most efficient way to get diapers out. Um, and most said they had about the same number of, of diapers as they had last year, uh, agencies as they had last year. We recommend that you distribute at least 50 diapers per child. The reason for that is because the, the, every little body in the study found that moms who were running short ran about 11 to 12 diapers a week. And 50 diapers uh, is about a week's worth of supplies, so it's about 25% of the, um, the required need for, your child, for children. So, of the folks who track how many diapers per, per child, 70% um, are distributing at least 25 diapers per child, uh, which is better than last year. Um, and 42% are distributing at least 50 diapers per child. Um, last year was only about 35%, so we'd like to see those numbers go up. We still have 10% are distributing less than um, 20, um, 25 diapers per child, so we'd really like to have more people distribute more diapers for, for kids, because uh, it really makes it, there's a, a breaking point, um, and that's what we sort of figure, 50 is kind of the minimum for that. 90% of you receive diapers in kind as donations. 82% hold, held on diaper drives, um, and a lot of diaper drives, 11 um, on average, uh, meeting was four, um, and they collected about 9.5 million diapers uh, total through those drives. So if you go by a diaper drive per, um, diapers per average per drive, it's not that big a yield, about 3,000, but the thing about diaper drives is you have to remember that they're also a great tool for raising awareness. Everybody who gives you a diaper, especially folks who haven't been diaper, buying bike diapers in a while, realize how expensive diapers are, and it's a huge awareness raising thing. Um, but even given that, there are um, still 22% uh, of you relying on 100% in-kind donations for your diapers. Um, and we collected uh, 762,000 um, cloth diapers. So, again, population served, um, 36, uh, 361,000 um, kids served monthly, average of 1,000 uh, 1, uh, 1,421, um, median again 120, again that's the size of the diaper banks. Um, we asked about um, who's tracking income, about 20, 200 of you are tracking income, um, and all reports are serving at least some clients at or below the federal poverty level. 74% report at least 90% of the clients are low income, by that meaning twice the federal poverty level, level. and 70% um, say that 100% of the clients are at or below the federal poverty level. Sources of income, a lot of you rely on partner agency um, data, which is great. That's one of the reasons why we recommend using partner agencies, because they, they collect all that information, it makes it easier for you. 67% um, use their own intake form or self-report from the clients. Um, 35 require some kind of uh, similar government program like WIC or SNAP. Um, uh, and then we have some, uh, they don't collect the information and respond to our answers. Um, and so I'm not really quite sure what happens. You guys buy a lot of diapers. <laughs> Diaper banking is an industry. We, we, we spend $2.1 million a year on diapers. 15% uh, 50 programs bought 100% of their diapers. Eight programs spent more than $50,000 um, on diapers. Um, and then again, as I mentioned, there's a lot of diaper banks that they don't buy diapers, they, um, they rely on donations. We have a savings program with uh, Cuties and, and uh, Medline, and it, it actually is sort of, um, it's working. 2.8 million diapers were bought through those programs, the total spent was about a half a million dollars, but you saved $338,000 total off retail. 
Again, still the predominant um, diapers are, are baby diapers. 98% uh, are providing di baby diapers. 41% uh, provide older children, and 27% are providing um, diapers to, to adults. Again, preponderance is, is um, disposable. 87% um, report disposable, and 41% um, or 14 are distributing cloth. We ask why you do it, and the overwhelming response from everybody is, is families in need, helping families in need, and helping babies. So the, not just children, but sort of recognizing this is a total for the whole family. Um, <clears throat> we asked about other basic needs. Are you guys distributing other things? And more than half are. Um, most are distributing other body cleansing products, soap, shampoo, toothpaste, um, and uh, clothing are, are sort of the two top ones, but also food. Um, we have more people doing uh, feminine, feminine hygiene products as well. Um, and then a little less uh, are nursing supplies, um, house cleaning, and, and laundry supplies. Operational profile. One of the best ways to buy um, cheap diapers is buy them by the truckload. So we ask how many, how many have warehouses and how many have loading docks. So those are the two things you need to be able to buy by the truckload. And we are finding more and more of you are having um, have both of those things. Uh, Seventy-four um, diaper banks have a loading dock, which is which is great. When we first started this, uh, I think there were six. Um, <laughs> we have uh, and forty-three uh, percent are using warehouses. About half are still operating at full um, all volunteer, um, and uh, another forty-two percent are um, have some paid staff. Paid staff total uh, right now is is. 1,233 people have diaper banking as a profession, or even a few years ago. Um, and the average paid staff is 11.5. And a lot, some of those are, are food banks and doing other things as well. Um, but still, it's, uh, it's pretty impressive. Also, the volunteer number, look at this. 68,000 volunteers, over a million volunteer hours for a, a total value by the independent um, sector's valuation of, of um, volunteer um, hours of $24 million worth of, of labor. Think about that. We asked about uh, government structure on uh, uh, the We asked about Form um, 990 because we want to get a sense for how, how big you guys are. When you, to file, in order to file the, um, if you file the, the Form 990, 990, the straight one, um, it means you have revenue streams of it at least 200,000, or assets of half a million. 79 percent, uh, 79 people um, have responded that way. Um, in between, uh, the, the easy form is uh, less than uh, 200,000, uh, um, but more than 50,000 in uh, revenue, or um, less than uh, half a million in um, assets. Uh, 48 are at that point, and then um, the folks who are still operating um, at less than um, 50,000 revenue streams are, are filing the postcard. Diaper banking is still a fairly new um, activity, and in uh, about half the cases, the founder is, is um, the executive director. Um, board sizes, uh, some are, are, as we sort of recommend with, with newer programs, have fairly small boards, uh, 56, but at least 160, 168 um, have at least five board members, um, and uh, 72 have at least 10 board members. Uh, so it's sort of a, a testament to the, the strength and the growth of the organization is the size of the board. Um, and 95 for succession planning, um, and then board contribution requirement um, again, sort of how, what do you, put, what demands you put on your board um, is part of what that's trying to measure. Two hundred forty-four. Most of the diaper banks have a website. Uh, Two hundred six have a Facebook account, and Twitter is the next popular. Um, other social media uh, programs are used considerably less, uh, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, um, LinkedIn, um, and five of you have a YouTube channel, which is great. Uh, we have, as a, as a diaper bank uh, movement, we have um, 347,000 Facebook likes and 100,000 Twitter followers. More than half, 62% apply for grants, um, and of the applications submitted, 4.6 4 million um, in grant money was awarded to the network as a whole. 34% received corporate donations, um, and 30, 139 um, they increased their donations this year, and 121 increased the donors this year. And uh, this one, um, 
over 100 times, 4% of you um, got mentioned in the media over um, 100 times. <coughs> Just some comparison stuff. Um, oh, sorry, the services. These are the things we, we provide, and you guys are making good use of it. 57% say that the materials plus on the website and um, the research are the most popular um, things. Uh, if you like the press releases and talking points we, um, we put up, uh, Decker Banks group, about 45% of you are report using them, um, and the social media feeds, 38% uh, webinars, 35% um, uh, use templates, and the weekly uh, webinar facts tips um, uh, you guys report, about 30 of you report using. And the one thing um, that sort of went down this year was one-on-one -on -one technical assistance, and I think that's because we've gotten better at putting stuff on the website, um, so you don't need to, to call us as, um, as often. Um, Buying programs, 46 are using QD, 15 are using Medline. Um, purchasing point is interesting. 61 of you guys are, are registered, but only 10 percent of you, only 10 of you are using them. Um, and this is a, a, a huge way of, of saving money on, on stuff you always you're going to use anyway. Staples, copying, um, uh, paint. I mean, it's, 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 it's an amazing number of things uh, you can get off purchasing point. So if you want more information about that. Contact me or Susan, um, and we'll, we'll talk to you more about that. <coughs> you guys are a giving community. Um, nearly uh, 30 of you um, entered a new diaper bank um, last year. Got involved in uh, the, the conference last year, started the committee or the task force. Uh, invited NDN and staff to, come, staff to come out and talk with your diaper bank, um, and presented a, a NDN uh, a webinar. But even more of you want to get involved next year. <coughs> so let us know. Uh, we are more than happy to take the help. This is interesting. This is growth over the last three years. Um, and again, this is from 2015. So we're stopped at two, 276 members. We're, we're now at 320. Um, but you can see there's, there's growth. The growth in the children served monthly has increased tremendously. And the number of diapers, we got started three years ago, 22 million were distributed. This last year, 46 million. Think about that. Uh, this is sort of showing the, um, the chart of, of how um, dis distribution of sizes of diapers, uh, diaper banks. Um, we, as you sort of expect, we have a lot early in the early stages. This year, we have a lot more <coughs> just starting off, so they're giving um, less than 5,000, um, and that jumps. Uh, you know, then we have you know, so the lower. This is used to start indicative of newer diaper banks just getting started, but there's also a big jump this year in, in um, you know, folks in the over the 10,000. Um, but also just look at how much on the bigger sizes, how many more diaper banks we have in those um, in those categories. So everyone's growing. It's great. Um, this is a con comparison of only the folks who responded to both last year's and this year's. So there was an increase of 40% of, 40, um, 40 of the diapers distributed uh, from the folks who distributed last year, distributing this year. Uh, they increased um, the number of kids served um, by 12%. And I think the disconnect there is that we're giving more diapers out per kid um, over the last, the last two years, which is, is a good trend. Uh, money spent on diapers. Um, more, seventy percent were spent more, but the average it was averaged out more evenly, um, and number of partners of uh, growth rate. Uh, the growth rate is something I want I want to delve into a bit more because we had growth changing from uh, uh, negative one hundred percent to um, more than uh, thirty seven thousand um, uh, percent. So we need to sort of figure out what's happening there. <laughs> and I am going to give this over to Troy. Thanks, Allison. Um, as you can see, there, there's some amazing numbers and figures that uh, have, have took place, and this is all 2015 numbers. We expect this year, 2016, you're going to see spikes in all these figures. You know, and we're really, really excited about it. When we talk about uh, what's going on in the network, you know, again, it's really important that these figures that Allison has presented are last year's numbers. We have more people, more diaper banks, more active programs now this year than last year. Again, as Allison mentioned at the beginning, you know, there's, some, there's been some uh, uh, organizations that have been on the roster of NDBM that have been purged. 
you know, from the records for this inactivity, and we don't even know if they exist any longer. But we have so many more new diaper banks, and many of you are here this year, that can add to what we're doing for the 2016 annual report. So I think it's really, really important, you know, these numbers reflect what you do and what we do collectively as a group. So I think you can see the importance of, of, of reporting and there's lots of you know, facts and figures that'll come into play here. Um, as far as you know, moving forward here, what I want to talk to you about is a little bit about what, what's, what's been happening this year. We all kind of know it, you know, because we, we've been going through it and stuff, but you know, even in our office, you know, when we're putting together you know, these, these reports for the presentations and things for, uh, for you all, it's like we never stop to say, what have we accomplished this year? What's been going on? You know, I mean, my gosh, you know, one of, the, one of the first things we have out here is the White House came calling to the diaper bank community. You know, I mean, that was incredible. Yeah, they reached out, it's basically, um, I don't know if you all, how many of you know the story on this, see the background on it, but it, they basically reached out because it, they came across the pediatrics article, the research that had been done years ago. And they came calling. You know, and said, hey, how do we get this? This is something we understand, we want to do something about. And so the White House team reached out uh, to the folks at Yale that Joanne and, and Allison worked with, brought a, you know, NDBN into the picture, started talking to some other diaper banks programs as well. It's like, how does this work? You know, what, what's the issue here? And how can we help solve it? And so they created the, you know, this community diaper program and started addressing the diaper gap. We would have preferred that they would use diaper need, but they wanted something on their own, so they kind of pushed the diaper gap a little more. But we've used that in the past as well, and so it's kind of a, it's a duality thing that, that, we, that we go forward with. Um, but, you know, it was based upon, you know, the, the research activities that's been done, the, the legislation that, that's been done, you know, that, that really attracted the attention of, of the White House on that front. One of the things out of this program, you know, that they really want to know, it, it, Allison mentioned in her presentation, the amount of diapers, the volume of diapers that diaper banks purchase, either in the wholesale market or the retail market. They want to say, how can we help that as well? And so that's when they, you know, developed the community diaper program um, with Jet.com. Um, and I'll talk a, bit, a little bit more about that in a moment. But the other thing that, that out of this White House initiative is Huggy stepped up even more. You know, they've been giving us 20 million di diapers a year committed to the network. They ponied up 2 million more diapers this year and then tossed in 22 million diaper wipes and stuff to, to the network. So that, that was a really uh, big step forward. And you saw last night the continued commitment of Huggies and the exciting things that are coming forward that we don't even have in the presentation because they just unveiled them last night. So we're, we're, that's where we are. Um, but the Jet.com program, this program, I, how many of you have ordered through Jet? and bought diapers through Jet. So most of you, a lot of you in here are very familiar with the program. Um, it, you know, it's not perfect for everyone, and we know that, and we told them that from the very beginning. Uh, you know, the limitations on, on, you know, 10 boxes of per size type of thing, and then all the volume of boxes, and, you know, like we've heard from you guys, because you all, you know, we basically piloted this program for them to roll out to over a thousand nonprofit organizations around the country. NDBN members did this. We built this thing, really. I mean, honestly, you know, we provide provide the advice for them and uh, and really help them understand what your needs are, is how frequently you would purchase diapers, how you know what the what potential market is for that, and then also. How, what do you do with them once you get them? You know, and we really try to explain that to them, and, and they uh, have, have tweaked their program, and you've seen that they continue to tweak their program, and they have, a, I think, a, a new initiative, the, the Jet Give a Pack program that's out there that some of you have signed up for, uh, and there's details on their website. I honestly don't know all the details about that program, but it's, it's basically um, uh, your donors can put money into your Jet account based, you know, and fundraise that way, and you can purchase diapers through that program. So there's multiple programs. That's one of the things that we really look to do is, is how, for those of you who are purchasing diapers, how can we continue to drive that price down and make more you know, diaper manufacturers or programs available to you? One of the other things that, that we've done this year that we were real excited about, uh, last um, fall we, we received uh, some funding from the Festival Children Foundation and it was you know, earmarked dollars to, to create uh, diaper drive boxes. And you know, this is a real shout out to um, the Project Undercover folks. This was kind of their design 
that they created that we kind of lifted, you know, uh, asked permission from them, got their, got their vendor and supplier, and created, you know, diaper drive boxes that were distributed. We printed up 600 of these, and I think we went out to about 50 different diaper bank programs. This was an opportunity for, for NDBN to provide very small organizations some materials to help them continue their work and to grow their, their diaper bank community. And so that's what we we're trying to do too. So it's, you know, oftentimes you think, oh, it's, you know, the large diaper bank programs that are getting the diapers and so on and so forth. We always look for how we can get product and services, you know, to all, all NDBN members. 2016, we've we really started doing more emphasis on, on, on moving beyond diapers as well into the basic needs arena. And uh, you know, this has really been led you know, by Joanne and, and development of a basic needs informed curriculum uh, that later this afternoon uh, should be doing a kind of a shortened version of it, but uh, you know, giving you an understanding of what this program's about. And it's really uh, designed for, you know, uh, uh, What's the don't have to sign for? It's designed for healthcare professionals, uh, educators, uh, all sorts of folks in, in the community that, that, that you know work with children and families on on basic you know just however they're coming across them, but looking at basic needs as as, as um, elements that, that create problems in their you know in people's lives. A lack of basic needs create lots of different problems, and 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 they manifest themselves in, in different ways. Uh, but Joanne will do a much better job explaining that than I just did. Um, the, um, we've gone around the country a little bit with this program as well, uh, speaking to some United Way organizations. Uh, Joanne's presented a lot of conferences as well, and, and uh, down at Dr. Bank of the Ozarks and, and, and Helping Mamas. Another program that we've been you know, ongoing, and we talked about this a little bit last year, was the, the initiative with A1 and uh, Healthy Mom and Baby. Um, and this is a program that's been introduced by, by Huggies, and it's, it's a, an outreach to, to nurses. A A1 is the Association of Women's Health Obstetrics and Neonatal Nurses. They have um, you know, about 300,000 nurses around, around the country working in hospitals, and, and that's the program last night, the, the uh, No Baby Unhug program that you saw on, on that video. Um, that, and, I, and I actually heard some people say, oh, I'm going to stop diaper banking and go become a baby hugger. Yeah. So we don't want that either. So you can do both, but you can't leave the diaper bank community. Um, but this program is continuing. What A1 has done this year is, is uh, hired uh, two nurse, nurse consultants that, that are working with local nurses to go out and, and help those communities uh, do diaper drives in their local community. And, uh, and they try to connect them with diaper banks NDBN member diaper banks if there's a program there. Some of you I think have come in contact with this program, but for this next year what we're going to be doing, and A1 is going to provide some information on how you can reach out to the A1 organizations in your community and say, we want to connect. You guys are interested in babies, you're interested in, in, in diapers, you're interested in volunteering, let's get, it, get these organizations connected together. And so that's another initiative that, that's coming down the way. Uh, you know, it, one thing, uh, I mentioned this yesterday in the presentation I was doing, A1 did a, their chapter in Hawaii, did a big diaper drive this year, and we're hoping that it leads to NDBN's first active um, you know, member in Hawaii. Um, but I also understand that there's some cloth diaper bank programs, that, you know, Rebecca's foundation has some organizations out there that we're hoping to loop in into the network as well. I'm gonna let Allison talk a little bit about lobbying day here for a moment, um, because, you know, again, that was, something else that took place this year that uh, many of you participated in. I'm going to just let her jump in and tell you how it came about and, and the success there, and then we'll jump back into some additional media things. Thanks, uh, thanks, Chris. In case you didn't know, we have a, a bill in con pending in Congress right now, H.R. Uh, 4055, which is the Hygiene Assistance for Families of Infants and Toddlers, which I, I hope to be called half it, but apparently no one's picking that up. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> But because we have it, uh, we, we um, I said, you know, why don't we get even more involved in this and see if we can like bring the diaper bank community, which is the best advocates and the, and the experts for why this is important, to Congress. So we, we said, let's throw a lobby day, um, which is pretty much the way we did it. Uh, we, and it was a, a little last minute, um, uh, but still 33 of you came down and joined us, and we were able to set up appointments, 41, 41 appointments with congressional members and staff. Um, and we actually got quite a few sign. We got at least nine sign-ons as a result of, of your direct efforts and lobbying. 
We had a policy panel beforehand featuring um, Bruce Leslie at First Focus, uh, who was super inspiring about child poverty. Uh, Rebecca um, Bala of um, Center for American Progress, who was a, a terrific moderator. Megan Smith, our, our research collaborator at Yale, um, presented on her work in um, internal depression and diaper need. Peter Edelman uh, of uh, Georgetown Law, who is the leading expert on, on TANF and, and poverty law, um, spoke. And then, of course, our own Joanne Goldblum um, built a, a really interesting and informative session. Uh, so it was. And we had people who weren't just us um, come too, which is also really incredible. So it was it was a great event, and we are going to do the same thing, only better next year, uh, May 10th and 11th, the Wednesday and Thursday. Um, and I hope you all can come. I, I feel this irresistible urge to stand behind a podium with Alice and go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, I know. I, 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 I blew it. I, I'm the one who said, "Just no, no talk of politics," and I hear I did it. Okay. Nasty so, man. So, yeah, nasty man. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. <laughs> Lob Lobby Day was a great success, and, and again, it, it was something. You know, I'm always amazed. It, what Allison does and Susan does, you know, that pulls together things really quickly that turn out to be just like, oh my God, this is this is something that other people it takes them a year and a half to organize and do, and you just did this in like six weeks, you know, and, and, and so you know, it's really impressive uh, what, what was accomplished out of lobbying day, and not just a lineup of, of you know really expert panelists that, that spoke about you know uh, poverty and. and in America and, and child poverty, um, but you know some of the outreach of, of media that, that re resulted from this. You know, one of the things that I don't know if you mentioned or not. You know, there's a companion Senate bill now as well to, to, to the House bill that was introduced uh, subsequently after you know, uh, you know that, that came into play here. But uh, you know, there was some some really strong media pickup on this. You know, and I, I think you know one of the big ones was you know this U.S. News and World Report article. Uh, you know that. It says the National Life Diaper Bank Network is lobbying Washington about the issue this week, pushing for passage of the hygiene. Da, 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 you know, but basically, it's like these guys are here. You know, they're you know National Diaper Bank Network and its members are on Capitol Hill. We got press on that. You know, and it's like, my gosh, you know, it's, it's always surprising what what's getting picked up at times. Um, the wrong slide. Okay. The other the other activity that uh, some of you heard about yesterday uh, in, in the presentation earlier about even flow feeding. Uh, this is kind of a, a pilot program that we're doing with even flow uh, with four diaper bank uh, programs around the country, and they're you know, you know kind of testing the market of how much product can they provide to help address feeding needs for uh, for new mothers, and even for women who aren't you know breastfeeding. You know, a new mom needs like nursing pads and so on and so forth, at least until, you know, they don't need them any longer. More detail, okay, there we go. Um, what else do I have here? What a roll, all right, there we go. Anyway, we've got the four, the four Dr. Beck programs up there that have been have kind of piloting, piloting this program for us to see how we can go and how we can move it forward. But it's uh, a lot of, um, uh, of you know breast, hand breast pumps and things that, that uh, allow people, you know, w women to pump and dump and work and, and you know and stuff. You know. <laughs> 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 anyway, we got we got. Uh, yeah. You know, yesterday, you know, Michelle Ayla introduced you know, the, the Talk, Read, Sing for Change program. Yes, good. Nice there we go. Okay. Yeah. Get out of that. I'm sure I could bury myself in this one too somewhere. Um, so I, I'm not going to go too much more into this, uh, other than to tell you one of the things that, that you know, was, we are still working out the details on, on how broad this program can go. Uh, one of the, the key components that's still missing is shipping. You know, and that's the bane of many of the things we do. You know, it's a shipping cost, and so we're working working on that, and we'll get you more information on on you know how many organizations we can get books to. The one thing we, everybody can participate in is from the social media side of this, and, and the graphic materials, and, and taking the you know uh, the talking points that have been developed of why it's so important to, you know to talk and interact with your children, and so that's something that every program can utilize. 
the social media graphics for this will be available, uh, the, the, the one sheets will be available, and uh, uh, Jane from, from Too Small to Fail told me last night that some of you have even came up and started uh, providing some suggestions and edits to the, to, the, to, the, <laughs> to the tip sheets. So we will see if we can incorporate those as well. Uh, so, but anyway, we're, we're, we're really, really excited about that because this is something that we are, like, like I said, we're moving beyond diapers, you know, because there are other tangential uh, services, products that you all can provide to your, to your communities. And I know some of you will not want any of this. You know, it's like we're solely focused on diapers and that's totally cool. You know, we're not saying you have to do this or anything else, but these are just options and things that are available. Uh, jumping into Diaper Need Awareness Week. You know, we had a really tremendously successful Diaper Need Awareness Week this year uh, as a network. You know, Allison, you know, was constantly in contact with you guys, I think, to, to push you, you know, beginning this past summer to get the proclamations requested in, in your states. And uh, there were 32 gubernatorial proclamations this year in 119 cities and counties. Uh, you know, and that was up to the end of you know, our, our goal next year, and Allison, we've talked about this, you know, we'd love to see all 50 states, you know, if we, if we can get all 50 states and governors, you know, there to, to recognize, you know, diaper need in their communities. And so that's something that, that if you have not done proclamations before, it's really easy. You know, we provide all the templates and it's a matter of just putting the, the information together and, and sending out the request. Uh, in two states, there's 16-year-old young women that you know got the proclamations for us. They went to Diaper Bank community. There was two young women who did, were doing 4-H projects, and which was really amazing. They were unrelated to one another, but they were both 4-H projects where they did diaper drives and they said, "How can we continue to grow this?" They got jazzed about it and said, "Oh, let's do the gubernatorial proclamation." Oh, I got the governor's proclamation now, and so it, it was really exciting to see that kind of activity as well, and, and, and quite inspiring. Um, you know, looking across the you know, Activities in around the states. We were in 40 states, you know. So there, were act there was activity whether at the local level or at the state level in 40 states. So again, that that map is growing. Um, we also had the uh, activation of the um, Facebook overlay, and and that you know that was a suggestion that, that came from Loving Bottoms and then uh, some support from Eastside Baby Corner on how we could do that. You know, some you know we've all seen it, but we. We had, I had not looked into that, we hadn't looked into that before, and said, well, that's a really great idea, let's see what we can do. And so we were able to, to, to provide that out there, and I know a lot of you use that overlay uh, on your, your, your Facebook page. We're look, we're looking at doing that more, uh, that kind of activity more, and making those kind of resources available to folks. We had uh, a, a Twitter chat, um, you know, about a thousand tweets in an hour. Uh, many of you participated in, in that. Um, Again, you can see the numbers there, 1.6 million impressions. Again, when I look at media and social media and things, you know, these impression numbers, they sound huge and big, you know, and, and you know, I don't know if they're, how valid they really are, but this is what reporting services provide back, and so this is what we go with. Um, but I do know that it's the impact that we're having. You know, when we keep talking about diaper need and we keep talking about the, the work that's being done, we are having tremendous impact. Uh, you also, many of you saw, we, could, we asked for a proclamation from the president. Since we are buddies with the president now, you know, we, we said, uh, hey, can you give us a proclamation for Diaper Need Awareness Week? Uh, we didn't get the proclamation. Um, We're not that good friends yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they, they had, uh, I don't know, something going on with substance abuse or something like that mm -hmm. the other week before. Um, so so we, 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 didn't, we didn't get that, but we had um, a, a letter from the president that really, you know, what we were doing, applauding the effort we were doing, uh, you know, and that was our most successful so social media post. Many of you who are active on Facebook probably know that, that Facebook this year changed all their analytics, and you know, we used to be getting 30,000, 35,000, 40,000, you know, uh, you know, likes and stuff on our posts. Um, but you know, since Facebook has changed their algorithms, it's really difficult to get those kind of numbers now. And so, for 5,000, it's actually you know a pretty successful, uh, at least for you know our our feeds and things. Um, we also started to toy around with, with uh, uh, PSAs. You know, many of you have seen Matt Jazzery, uh, new to our staff, and, and Jazzery is really s very skilled uh, uh, videographer, uh, among other many talents. But um, we did a, a, a short video. Um, I don't know how many of you have seen this on our website or, or uh, made it. You know. There are two young women, uh, they're sisters. They had, they had babies about six weeks apart, first time moms. 
And uh, these, uh, any of you are familiar with Harry Chapin? These are his nieces. And so the Chapin family is a really singing uh, uh, organization, you know, this deep root, roots in bluegrass and, 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 and folk music and things. Um, I'm not going to show this right now because of the interest of time. But uh, it, you know, if any of you are interested, you know, it's on our website. Both the, there's a 60-second version, version, and then there's a longer full-length version. It's about six minutes long. Um, A1 again this year uh, conducted a media campaign again. Did more outreach with uh, the nurse consultants, and they do an online diaper drive uh, at diaperdrive.org where nurses report how many uh, diapers that they've collected and given to local organizations. Again, these local organizations may not be diaper banks, but they are organizations that are distributing diapers in their communities. And this number is low. Uh, Summer Hunt, who's here, many of you again have been matched over there, um, indicated that like this in the past week, that this number's got ticked up about 100,000. So it's you know, about 225,000 diapers, I think, you know, that, that are look, were collected during this time period. The other thing about A1, what they're doing this year, is expanding beyond Diaper Need Awareness Week. This is going to be an ongoing campaign, a year-round campaign, uh, again, about connecting diapers, nurses, diaper bank programs together. You know, media-wise, you know, there's a tremendous amount of coverage. You know, from a national standpoint, from a local uh, media standpoint, one of the, you know, these are just a few things. Uh, Stanford Social Media Review. Uh, in social innovation review, uh, you know, from local TV stations. Uh, there's a nice profile on, on Joanne and the Hartford Current, um, and a lot of a lot of op-ed coverage as well. Uh, and again, many of you had some great coverage in your in your local markets. We've got a little little video here. I want to show you the jazzery put together. <laughs> In many poor communities, the cost of diapers is higher than anywhere else. Inner city convenience stores often charge three times as much as large retail outlets. Buying diapers for babies could really add up, and for some families, it's a major stress on their budget. Families living below the poverty level struggle to afford many basic needs, including diapers. One tiny little baby can go through a lot of diapers. Any parent knows they are vital, but they are extremely expensive. One month can cost about $150. That means for families who make minimum wage, diapers represent 15% of their income. So critical for, their, for that child's health and well-being to be able to have enough. Diaper need could hurt a baby's development and the mother's mental health. One in three moms struggles with buying diapers for her child. Because they're listed as hygiene items, diapers are not provided by federal organizations. They cannot get diapers from Medicaid, Medicare, food stamps, or WIC. But not all parents can afford to do a healthy amount of changes. As a result, some children spend a day or longer in one diaper. Complicated and severe. Um, diseases, you know, like hepatitis, like there's a staphylococcus. Study also suggests the issue needs more attention. Joanne Goldblum started the National Diaper Bank Network. A diaper, while it seems like something so incredibly small, can impact a family's life in a very real way. This week is Diaper Need Awareness Week. Diaper Need Awareness Week. A diaper Need Awareness Week. An initiative of the National Diaper Bank Network to get diapers to families in need. It's really proclaimed by the, the governor and local county commissioners as a week to raise awareness about the silent crisis that is diaper need. One of our core missions is to spread awareness of diaper need. And diaper need basically is when families don't have access to enough diapers to keep their children clean, dry, and healthy. Over 40% of the moms who get our diapers make less than $500 a month. Um, and diapers, we know, cost a hundred dollars a month. If a child can't go to a daycare, that parent or caregiver can't go to work or can't go to school to try to possibly better their lives. That helps to keep them in school, keep them on their job. Sometimes I may be able to get stuff so I have to go to my family, you know, and ask for help. I know eventually I will run out and with them helping every month it's easier. That cost rises so quickly so even even if it's just a couple here or there, anything that people do can come. Adam partnering with the Columbus Diaper Coalition to St. Luke's Diaper Bank bundles 
of Hope Diaper Bank. And the Junior League of Panama City. The CNY Diaper Bank. The St. Louis Area Diaper Bank. The Diaper Bank of North Carolina. The Destiny's Diaper Bank. The Diaper Bank of the Ozarks. The St. Bernadette Diaper Bank. The Jewish Community Alliance of Southern Maine. Mommy's Closet. The Food Bank of North Alabama. Happy Mommies. The Austin Diaper Bank. The Nestle's Diaper Bank. The Indiana Hope Bank. West Side Baby. The Carinette Pregnancy Center. The Greater Hampton Road Diaper Bank. The National Diaper Bank Network. Thousand diapers will go to help families in need. Michigan Diapers Bank got a donation of 50,000 diapers from Huggies today. Meyer will donate one dollar of every pack of Huggies diapers sold. And 50,000 diapers were delivered to the St. Bernadette Diaper Bank. Shepherd of the Hill School and Centennial challenged students to a diaper drive, and they have gone above and beyond. So far, look at that mountain of diapers. And if any parent can get help with diapers, that's great. Yeah. So donating just one diaper goes a long way. So that applause is for you guys, because that's your stuff. That's what you guys have been doing out in the marketplace, and that's just you know a small segment of what's out there. Uh, we cheated a little bit. Some of those were you know clips from uh, uh, 2015, just to help put the narrative together, but the vast majority, on the local level, all those were from this year, from, from Diaper Need Awareness Week, and again, that, that's what you guys are doing out there. Um, one thing that, if you don't know, the service that we do provide is, if you have local news coverage, broadcast coverage in your market, we can pull down those segments for you and, and, and share you, uh, with you the clips that you can then have for, for your records and for your files. Again, a lot of TV stations post the, you know, these kind of stories on their, on their Facebook pages, and you can link to that, and, and, and that's a great way of, of promoting your own organization, and most of you do a, a really effective job of that. Just for Diaper Need Awareness Week alone, uh, we saw you know, 338, more than 338 lo local news segments across the country, so that was pretty impressive. You know, it's 5.6 million viewers and has a, a dollar value it's, you know, over a quarter million dollars, which is pretty cool. On the print side, um, you know, you know com com combining the, the print and broadcast together, there were 500 stories about Diaper Need Awareness Week and local diaper bank programs. And, you know, a lot of this was, you know, maybe it's a local diaper drive that's taking place during that week. It was about proclamations. Many of you had, you know, public events where you were getting awarded those proclamations and, and turned that into a media event, and that was great. You know, it's 240 million potential viewers and readers, uh, and that's from a meltwater estimate, which is a service that we use. In 2016, you know, so far, you know, again, the year's not over yet. We've had, you know, over 3,500 news stories, you know, that, that have come out across the country about diaper banks, diaper drives, diaper programs, diaper need. You know, these are the things that we search for uh, and, and pull down reports. And again, this figure is just obscene, the 3.1 billion figure that uh, um, is potential audience views and stuff like that that, that, all, that all the media kind of puts into place. Um, we are on to legislative initiatives. Okay. So media was great. We also had a lot of activity in, in the state legislatures and the federal legislature. We had, um, as I mentioned earlier, the um, half it. No, okay. I use this as a... Uh, <laughs> we've got 56 co-sponsors. Wrong. <laughs> we've got 56 co-sponsors in, the, in, the, in the, um, the House. Think about that. That's, that's great. I mean, that's uh, one-seventh of the, the House. Uh, we need to get to more than half to pass, but we're, we're getting there. I mean, it's huge. And we've got uh, the Senate version with three co-sponsors. We also, in the state level, look at all these states that considered either exempting diapers or reducing the sales tax on diapers. California, Connecticut, D.C., Illinois, Maryland, Michigan, Ohio, Utah, and Tennessee. We've got it actually approved in Connecticut for starting uh, fiscal year 2018. <laughs> Vouchers for diapers considered in California and D.C. Um, and the, the California one is, I mean, even though it was vetoed by the governor, both of those, those um, bills passed both houses like wide, wide margins. Uh, it's really just because California apparently wants you to actually have money in the budget to do something before the governor does it. So uh, we'll, we'll work on that. Um, money was put in the state budget for uh, other things uh, that was added in Missouri. Uh, like I said, that's been taken out. Um, but still, it is. It, it got to the budget, got to the approval, and then 
oh yeah, we don't actually have money. Um, but Massachusetts also um, gave some money to a di local diaper bank. Um, and we had hearings on diaper need um, in Connecticut, Maryland, uh, and California, um, and DC. Um, so it was, it was really, really terrific. Uh, other policy initiatives, uh, we've, got a post, we've posted a survey of, of 50 states' um, policies on Medicaid, um, Medicaid policies regarding diapers for children. Uh, it's on our website, and we're going to see if we can sort of use that to, to push a regulatory um, change in the states to get more diapers to more kids uh, who need them. Because in a lot of cases, states are required to provide diapers uh, to, to kids, uh, disabled kids who need them, but they often don't provide those diapers until age uh, three or even age five. Um, and it's a lot of hoops, so um, we'd like to see if we can get that um, a little more uh, available to folks. San Francisco's Diaper Bank is fully operational at this point um, and providing diapers uh, throughout the city uh, in the Family Resource Centers and the um, Human Service Agency um, help, uh, place. And it's, it's, we're learning lots about diaper distribution on a municipal level. And we've got lots of research projects in the work. Um, we've got a, a study with uh, Yale, the Yale School of Nursing um, with their, their um, home visiting program asking home visitors what di di difference diapers make in uh, home visiting. Uh, we're working with Yale on finally crunching all the di uh, diaper need. Um, we've got over a uh, 1,000 um, uh, survey entries we need to sort of crunch and make sense of. And uh, we have um, a few other things uh, in, in, in the works. So. Then looking ahead for 2017, uh, we've got some dates for you. We've got uh, lobbying day, May 10th and 11th, 2017. Allison's already on board with that, and, and they're starting to look for a hotel accommodations, conference facilities, and starting to plan that. Again, we encourage everyone to come to Lobbying Day if you can. Because it, you know, I think those of you who, who went this year really found it to be a, a great success. And uh, we hope you tell other folks about that too, that they should come. Diaper Need Awareness Week is September 25th to October 1st. So it's that same you know, last week in, in September, uh, early October. Then we're looking at the Diaper Banks in America Conference, again, the same time period next year, the 25th to the 27th. Uh, we are leaning, leaning toward Orlando, going to Orlando next year in Florida. So that, that's where we are on that. And uh, so, again, yeah, there's, there's so much going on. You know, and, and you, you push us from a national standpoint to do better all the time, and we try our best to, to you know, do as much as we can. Uh, to help you do the jobs that you do that are so vital in your communities. So, so thank you very much for your attention. Uh, as Allison said, you know, the, the, the presentations will be available. There's a lot of data in here. If you have questions about it, reach out to Allison afterwards. Uh, and, and, but again, do those annual reports. When they come out to you later this year, please make sure you make the time to do those and, and turn in that information. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay.